can we talk about another exciting, uh, another exciting space, which is tissue engineering? What is tissue engineering or regenerative medicine? Yeah, so that tissue engineering or regenerative medicine have to do with building an organ or tissue from scratch. So you know, someday maybe we can build a liver, or, you know, or, or or make new cartilage, um, and also would enable you to you know someday create organs on a chip, which people we and others are trying to do, which might lead to better drug testing and maybe less testing on animals or people. Organs on a, a chip. That sounds fascinating. So what what are the various ways to generate tissue? And how do, so is it, you know, the, the one is of course from stem cells. Is there other methods? What are the different possible flavors here? Yeah, well, I think, I mean, there's multiple components. One is having generally some type of scaffold. That's what Jay Vacanti and I started many, many years ago. And then on that scaffold, you might put different cell types which could be a cartilage cell, a bone cell, could be a stem cell that might differentiate into different things, could be more than one cell. And a scaffold, sorry to interrupt, is kind of like a canvas that it's a structure that you can, on which the, the cells can grow? I think that's a good explanation what you just did. I'll have to use that. <laughs> the canvas, okay. that's good. Uh, yeah, so I, I think that that's fair. You know, and the chip could be such a canvas, um, could be fibers that are made of plastics and that you'd put in the body someday. And when you say chip, do you mean electronic chip? Like uh, Not the- necessarily, it could be though, but it doesn't have to be, it could just be a structure that's not not in vivo, so to speak, that's, you know, that's outside the body. So is there- Canvas is, is not a bad word. <laughs> so is there a possibility to weave into this canvas a computational component so if we talk about electronic chips, some some ability to sense, control some aspect of this growth process for the tissue. I, I would say the answer to that is yes. I, I think right now people are working mostly on on validating these kinds of chips for saying, well, it does work as effectively or hopefully as just putting something in the body. But I think someday what you suggested, you certainly would be possible. So what kind of tissues can we engineer today? What, what yeah, what kind yeah, of Yeah, well, well, so skin's already been made and approved by the FDA. There are advanced clinical trials, like what are called phase three trials, that are at complete or near completion for uh, making new blood vessels. One of my former students, Laura Nicholson, led a lot of that. Um, First of all, that's amazing. So human skin can be grown, and that's already approved through the entire the FDA process. So that means what so so the one that means you can grow that tissue and do various kinds of experiments in terms of uh in terms of drugs and so on but what is that does that mean that it's some kind of healing and treatment of different conditions for unhuman beings Yes I mean they've been approved now for I mean different groups have made them different companies and different professors, but they've been approved for uh, burn victims and for patients with diabetic skin ulcers. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, so uh, skin, what else? Well, at different stages, uh, people are like skin, blood vessels. Um, there's clinical trials going now for helping patients hear better, for patients that might uh, be paralyzed, for patients that uh, have different eye problems. I mean, and different groups have worked on just about everything, new liver, new kidneys. I mean, there have been all kinds of, of, of work done in this area. Some of it's early, but but there's certainly a lot of activity. What about neural tissue? Uh, s- yeah. The, ner- the nervous system and even the brain. Well, there have been people that are working on that too. We've done a little bit with that, but there are people who've done a lot on neural stem cells. And uh, I know Evan Snyder, who's been one of our collaborators on uh, some of our spinal cord works done work like that. And there've been other people as well. So is there challenges for the, when it is part of the human body, is there challenges to getting the, the body to accept this new tissue that's being generated? How do you solve that kind of challenge? There can be problems with it, accepting it. And I think maybe in particular, you might mean rejection by the body. So there are multiple ways that people are trying to deal with that. One way is, which was what we've done in, with Dan Anderson, who was one of my former postdocs, and I mentioned this a little bit before for a pan- pancreas, is encapsulating the cells. So immune 
um, immune cells or antibodies can't get in and attack them. So that's a way to, to protect them. Uh, other strategies could be making the cells non-immunogenic, which might be done by different either techniques which might mask them or using some gene editing approaches. So there, there are different ways that people are trying to do that. And of course, if you use the patient's own cells or cells from a close relative, that might be another way. And it increases the likelihood that it'll get accepted if you use the patient's own cells. Yes. And then finally, there's immunosuppressive drugs, which you know will suppress the immune response. That's right now what's done, say, for a liver transplant. The fact that this whole thing works is just fascinating, at least from my outside perspective. 